everybody. This is John, Elite Gamers United. I hope you like my intro card that I put together today. I am still learning the um, the editing software, the video editing uh, Adobe Premiere, but I've sort of got the hang of it. And uh, there is gameplay coming. A few more after, uh, within a couple days, I'm going to be starting to add gameplay to all my videos. So let's let's get to tonight's topic. All right, this is a game I've been wanting to talk about for a while, and that is the ever awesome. Parasite Eve, the first one, not the second, and not the third garbage day, I mean birthday. Release, this game was released, it was, what, what year was this, 19, uh, yeah, it was 98, 1998 on the PS1, and it came out right around Christmas, which is also when the game does take place, New York City, basically a uh, New York detective, uh, police officer, whatever you want to call it, Aya Bria is attending a, um, an opera in in um in a in an up in one of the theaters I forgot the name of it I'm sorry it's late tonight in one of the theaters in New York City when uh in the middle of the opera the actress starts to uh sort of act a little funny and immolate the whole audience lights them on fire burns half them to death and it's up to A to find out what's going on she chases her down and she notices this girl is uh basically mutated. It turns into a story, a science fiction story about mitochondrial DNA and how uh, evolution is, can be enforced and induced through science and with mitochondria. So let's leave it at that. There's a little bit of psychic uh, powers thrown in there for good measure too. But I want to start with the graphics. This game was beautiful. The cinematics, and the game spanned uh, three discs also, just to note. And most of that space, believe it or not, was really for the full motion video sequences, which were absolutely gorgeously rendered. The in-game uh, backgrounds, much like uh, Resident Evil and Final Fantasy VII, were pre-rendered backdrops with polygonal uh, main characters and villains and enemies. The, the uh, character styling is closer to that of Final Fantasy VIII. Rather than nine or seven, it was it went for a very realistic look and it pulled it off. The texture work is very very well done. The animations are very smooth. They're realistic. They're believable for the time. Okay, for the time. The uh, lighting effects, the fire effects, all the special effects in the game are done very well. The only thing I'm going to nitpick is some polygon clipping here and there. It's uh, it's minor. Please don't think uh, I'm, I'm crapping on the visuals. It's minor, but it's the only thing that detracts from the graphics being a 10 for the PS1. The soundtrack was very haunting. It was very dark. The opera, the music in the opera was phenomenal. There's a lot of uh, piano-esque um, soundtracks in there. There's a lot of, uh, you know, more uh, dark and uh, deep, somber tunes there's no heavy metal guitar riffs here. There's no crazy bass and drums. There's none of that. Think uh, think along the lines of Resident Evil if you want to get an idea for the music. It's closer to it's closer to a Resident Evil type soundtrack than uh, anything I can think of. The gameplay, the controls are tight. I, I, and it's uh, again, it's mainly a menu based system, but you do have full control of Aya in combat. You, uh, whatever gun you have equipped, however you have it set up or uh, modified, uh, det is determined by a cone um, or a, a sphere of distance, let's call it, where you can attack your enemy without, uh, and you know, instead of using your powers, you use your gun. You can shoot them, you can choose what enemies to shoot. You can have different effects on the bullets like stun, knockback, flame damage, etc. There's a lot of customization here. The battle system, believe it or not, would be, I would compare it to something like um, Grandia 2, believe it or not. That's a good way to put it, except with guns instead of swords. The, the combat system was very well done. There is a strategic element to it. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed how you have to make your bullets count because there's some battles where if you don't go in there equipped properly, you're screwed. The items you have a, a almost a, you have a nice sized inventory which does grow as uh, I think you either upgrade it or you find items in, uh, later in the game that let you enhance it. It's been a while, but overall the gameplay the mechanics are tight. It is an RPG first and foremost. If you're not into menu based RPGs, 
with a little bit of uh, player interaction, in this case being able to move around strategically on the field in real time. If you're not into it, the game's not for you. If you want a pure turn-based RPG with no control, not for you. This is an action real-time hybrid uh, system, a turn, a hybrid turn-based real-time system. That's the best way to put it. And it was unique in its day. It really was. This is the first game I could think of that had a gameplay system like that. It's one of the few that, to this day, still does it very well. It's a game I can definitely go back to. I would love to play this game again in my free time, except I'm playing so many other games right now. The story is well-written. The soundtrack is, is very appropriate for the game. Nothing memorable here. The controls, the gameplay mechanics are all top-notch. Again, this was Squaresoft. Yeah, it still said Squaresoft in their heyday. You know, the, this is before the de debatable Final Fantasy X and twelve and thirteen series. This is before all the controversial titles in mainline series uh, started coming to fruition. So if you want to go back and enjoy a good old-fashioned, well, a new, a good new-fashioned RPG from Squaresoft before the Enix merger, this is a great place to start. It is very accessible. I don't remember if there were multiple difficulty options. I do have to go back and look. But actually, no, I, think, I do believe there were. I'm almost positive. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Please do, okay? I, I am not perfect as much as I like to think I am. But with that being said, I do highly, highly recommend Parasite Eve. It is not expensive. And believe it or not, uh, there was I forgot to mention this. There was really one real reason. The only reason this game sold as well as it did, besides having the Squaresoft name, is that it had a playable demo of Xenogears, Bushido Blade 2, Brave Fence of Musashi, and Final Fantasy VIII. That's almost like what Zone of the Enders when that came out, the only reason anybody bought that game was for the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo. I'm going to chalk up 80% of the sales for this game is because it had a demo of Final Fantasy VIII and Xenogears. Actually, Xenogears is the only playable one. Scratch that. But it did have a preview of Final Fantasy VIII, which Final Fantasy was at full stride when this game came out. So people probably bought it just for that. But anyway... It's a well-designed, it's a well-done package. It's a nice booklet, very nice-looking discs. Uh-oh, one of my discs is loose. The third disc is actually the uh, demos, the visual and the playable demos. Yep, Xenogear is the only playable one. But the two CDs that the game spans, it, it, it more or less, it's a 15 to 20-hour absolute tops game if you take your time and try to do everything that can be done. Otherwise, I think the game could be banged through in maybe 8 to 10 hours tops. Maybe even less. I'm almost certain it could even be done in less. Um, there's a lot of there's bonus scenarios there. The game does have a lot of content. The replay value is there. It's not super high. If not for the fact for the bonus challenges. Very similar to Resident Evil's after game challenges that it has. I say, don't spend more than 20 bucks on this game. 25, actually, no, let me raise that. 20 to $40, which is what I think it, it's probably worth. All these big box Squaresoft games uh, did hold value. Uh, Final Fantasy IX, I know, still goes for about 40 50 bucks. Final Fantasy VIII goes for 40 50 bucks. With that being said, do Elite Gamers United recommend this? Yes. Does John recommend this game? Absolutely. It's an enjoyable game. Great story. A little scary. You know, tuck the children away. Don't let them see some of the cutscenes. And uh, the game does have a little bit of nudity and some mature sexual themes in it. And that's the only warning I'm going to put out there. I will be adding gameplay for all my videos in the near future. Uh, probably in another video or two, I will have gameplay introduced. I cut my capture card. I've learned the editing software. Now it's a matter of integrating it properly. I thank you all. If you enjoyed this review, like and subscribe. This is John, Elite Gamers United. Have a good night.